While everyone has heard of Godzilla, not all can say they are familiar with one of his counterparts in Godzilla King of the Monsters, Rodan. Rodan has actually been around for nearly as long as Godzilla, with his first movie coming in 1956, two years after the original Godzilla. Along with being one of the better Toho films in my opinion, this classic monster flick had one of the most gripping and emotionally dark plots out of all the giant monster movies. Specifically, the horrible deaths of the first Rodan and his mate. Yes, in the beginning there were two Rodan creatures, a mating couple, partners for life. Their heartbreaking deaths are the topic for this video. Residents, this is Jacob and let's get to it. Before we get to the horrible deaths of the Rodan couple, let's briefly touch up on the story of 1956 Rodan film, 63 year old spoilers incoming. All throughout this story are remarks about how humanity had harmed the Earth and that Godzilla and the emerging monster threats were all connected to the atom bomb testings that were heavily going on during the 50s. The story starts off set on a giant coal mine somewhere in the heart of Japan. After some time, miners begin to show up brutally mutilated, but most importantly, dead. Following some debate amongst the other miners, the humans soon find out that it's not another person who is committing these murders, but actually giant man-eating bugs from deep within the coal mine, after the crew dug too deep. This whole movie is filled with countless human fatalities and it's not afraid to play around with death's ugly reality, something I respect coming from a giant monster movie. The miners soon ask for help from the local military and humanity fights back. After even gunshots could not fatally harm the giant bug monsters, it seemed like there was nothing the human characters could do to stop this outbreak. But then something else was born, something even more dangerous than the bugs. The Rodan creatures hatched from their eggs and were ready to start a life, a family of their own. A lone patrolling Japanese fighter plane was doing his basic routine, surveying the local airspace. This pilot did not know that this would be his last moments of life. He detected something in the sky, something moving at supersonic speeds and maneuvering in ways thought to be impossible. He and the crew back at the base did not know that this UFO was one of the Rodan, so they made the mistake of following it. It wasn't long till the Rodan noticed it was being followed, and then made a U-turn without losing any of its velocity. Before the pilot could react, Rodan slammed into the fighter. All that was found of the pilot was his bloody helmet. And this was only the beginning. The time that followed the introduction of these two flying monsters was filled with terror and destruction. The mating pair of Rodan had claimed their territory, and all humans who were unfortunate enough to live within this area were prime targets for the monsters. Cities were on fire, thousands were being killed, and it's hard to imagine how much money this would have costed the country of Japan. The giant beasts would use their super powerful wings to deliver atomic shockwaves, strong enough to obliterate entire buildings in one flap. On top of this massive power was the reality that these creatures could fly at speeds greater than sound. On a little island like that of Japan, that means they could destroy any city in the country in a matter of hours. The fate of the entire world was at stake. If these Rodan were to breed, the earth would be consumed by their power. Something had to be done, but fighting these Rodan by normal means was doing little to nothing to even slow the beasts down. There was only one thing that could be done. The decision was made to commence a massive bombing after discovering the location of the Rodan pair's nest at the base of Mount Aso. The military planned to bomb the volcano and trigger an eruption that would trap or kill the monsters. It began. This was no ordinary bombing, the attack went on for what seemed like minutes. High velocity shells, missiles, rockets. Everything the military had was firing directly on top of the Rodan nest. Both Rodan seemed to be impervious to these sorts of weapons directly, but when the earth was literally being shifted by the power of these weapons, even the Rodan monsters could do nothing but hide and screech out in terror. Their home was being destroyed and they were unable to reach one another. They were separated and afraid. To the humans of this story, they were terrible monsters of death, but the reality of the situation was that these were just animals. Not much different than the birds you see nesting in your trees or buildings around your home. Just like how a blue jay will attack nearly anything within its territory, these Rodan were simply trying to guard their home and soon to be family. 
Little did they know that this dream would never happen. The immense barrage on the volcano did eventually lead to its eruption. The Rodans were being overwhelmed by falling rubble from above due to the explosions, and now they were feeling the heat of the hot magma surfacing from deep below. In a last effort, both Rodan managed to break out from their earthy tombs. Badly injured from the events of the last few minutes, one of the Rodan was hit directly by boiling hot fumes and was crippled. Slowly, the Rodan, presuming to be the female, fell towards the lava below. Unlike the rendition of Rodan that we are about to see in Godzilla King of the Monsters, these original Rodan did not have the same immunity towards extreme heat. The Rodan landed in the lava. Its screams could be heard for miles around, causing its mate to rush to its location. Remember, this was a giant monster movie made way back in 1956, and the scene that we are about to talk about was something you would never expect for a movie in this genre during the time, or even now. As the one Rodan squirmed in insane pain, the other Rodan hovered directly above, clearly knowing that its soulmate was having its last moments of life. Here's when something incredible yet so sad occurred. The presumed male Rodan fell directly on top of its dying mate by choice. It did not fly away, it did not seek out the humans for vengeance. All it wanted to do was be with its mate. Life without each other was not worth living to these monsters. They burned alive. Their roars of agony echoed across the land. They died just like they lived. Together. This Romeo and Juliet style death was something that was brand new for the monster movie genre and to this day I can't think of another monster movie that has tried this sort of tragic love story. The original Rodan movie was way ahead of its time, just like the original Godzilla, bringing reality to its crazy monster fantasy. It had terror, death, anger, and love. If you weren't a fan of Rodan before, maybe now you'll be able to see that Rodan is right up there with Godzilla and King Kong. If you liked today's video, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you actually at least have a chance at knowing when we upload. As always, residents, this has been Jacob, and peace out.